I'm Vinny Politan. Thanks so much for joining us here on Closing Arguments. This time in the program, we always open up our unsolved case file to take a look at a story um, that needs some attention. And it's, a, you know, we do missing persons. We do unsolved uh, murders, trying to get some answers and some sense of justice for the victim and the victim's family. And many of these cases could use your help as well. I post everything uh, on social media each and every day on my Facebook page, uh, Vinnie Politan Court TV. You can take a look at it. You can share it. Um, tonight's story uh, in involves a mother of two, and she's, she's a grandma, too. And she went missing, was reported missing, and her remains were found. It, it was difficult to identify those remains. They had to go through some uh, DNA testing to, to do the match and to figure it all out. But what they haven't figured out is who killed Megan Tillman. Tonight's Unsolved Case File. Memories and a little wooden box. That's all Jim Tillman has left of his daughter, Megan. It's been two and a half years, and there's a special kind of hell that you live in when someone is missing for a year and a half, and then you find out that they, they were murdered. Megan's aunt, Shannon Perry, and her father have been praying for justice. November 1st, 2017, family reported the 43-year-old missing from Annapolis. Less than a month earlier, October 18th, 2017, remains were recovered in the area of Holly and Chesapeake Drive in Shadyside. Initial reports said the remains were an Asian woman. When we first heard about that body, and we heard about it early on, I, f I fell to the floor. And then when we realized, when they said, oh, well, it's not Megan, you know, I said, but that means some other poor family is out there going through this. While Megan's family waited patiently, Months and months went by when homicide detectives from Anne Arundel County Police obtained DNA samples from family and conducted extensive testing. They were finally able to identify the recovered remains as that of Megan Tillman. In that box is from Megan's chin up, her torso, and one leg. That's what I got from the coroner's office. We don't have suspects, but we do have people of interest. Anne Arundel County Detective Kelly Harden has been on the case since 2017, and she's getting close to making an arrest. Frustrating, though? Very frustrating, because I need to prove there's only one chance. You only get one chance. Harding is keeping close tabs on Megan's roommates. They shared a townhouse in Annapolis on Rockwell Court when she disappeared. This is a picture of the three of them posted on Facebook in August of 2017. Megan's boyfriend, William Rice, and another roommate, Christina Stallings, left town shortly after Megan disappeared. Police found her Jeep dumped in an out-of-the-way shopping center parking lot in Prince George's County. Someone came forward and um, saw when um, her, how her Jeep ended up in PG County, that's important. Rice and Stallings no longer live in Maryland. One is in uh, custody in Tucson, Arizona, and the other one is, is also in Arizona. Mm -hmm. Is that where they're from, or I mean, what, did, did they flee there? So I don't want to say the word flee, but that is where they traveled after she went missing. Detective Harding has traveled out west and is working with law enforcement at the Pima County Sheriff's Office in Arizona, hoping someone there knows about what happened here to Megan. If somebody in Arizona can come forward and um, give us information about maybe things that they talked about, you know, William and Christina with the you know, other people, that's also important. That one nugget, that one piece could um, make everything fit. That one little piece, that, that one piece of the puzzle. Time has passed. People have moved from the neighborhood where Megan lived and likely died. But the Tillmans are hoping money will motivate someone to come forward. 
The Anne Arundel County Police Department is offering a reward of up to $10,000. Please come forward. Make the call. Make the call. Don't be afraid. Come forward. You know, do what you have to do. This could be your niece. This could be your sister, your daughter. Your mother. Megan's oldest daughter, Paris, is now her mother herself. Her son, Cecil, will never know his grandmother. Megan's younger daughter, Grace, just eight, will now grow up without her mom. You always hear about people being murdered and you, you feel horrible for them, but what you don't know is what it does to a family. Incredible frustration, but you can help if, if you know. And we've got viewers uh, across the country, including out in Arizona. If you have any information, call the Anne Arundel County Police Department, 410-222-4700, 410 410-222-4700. 222-4700. We'll keep that number up throughout the rest of this segment. Um, also, again, on Facebook, you can share the story and spread it around. Uh, we've got some special guests joining us tonight. Uh, joining us in Tulsa, Oklahoma, is the aunt of Megan Tillman. Shannon Perry is with us. And in Millersville, Maryland, the lead detective on the case, Detective Kelly Harding. Uh, welcome to you both. Thank you for joining us. Um, Shannon, let's start first with her daughters and grandchild. How are they doing? How are they handling what has been a, a horrific time over the past uh, more than three years? Well, it's been very difficult for Megan's older daughter in particular. Um, for one thing, she lo also lost her stepmother not long after she lost her mom. And um, so it's, it's been very hard. And I think that she's doing well now, but it's, you know, we're three years out and um, she's a strong young lady, um, wonderful mother herself. Uh, we're so proud of her. And poor little Gracie, you know, for the longest time, um, she thought her mommy didn't love her anymore because Megan stopped calling her. And Megan called her almost every day. Um, but Gracie now knows what's happened with her mother. She doesn't know all the details, of course. And she's thriving. She's doing well. That's good to hear. Uh, um, it, it's, it's so hard on the family. And, and that's why I try to put these stories up so people understand. So if you know something, just have the courage to come forward with the, with the information. Um, Shannon, can you also tell us a little bit about the personality of Megan so folks at home get to, get to know her? And my understanding was she was sort of a trusting person. Megan was a very trusting person, and that, that made her vulnerable sometimes because she believed people as they presented themselves. And she had a big heart, and she gave freely of, of herself and really didn't expect um, people to take advantage of her, but sometimes they did. Um, Megan, Megan loved her children. That was the most important thing to her in this world was her, her, her children. And her lifetime goal really was to open a daycare center. Um, she was a, a very loving, family-oriented young woman. Detective, what, what can you tell us about, through the investigation, this, this relationship, this, uh, the, the two roommates? Um, what exactly was the nature of the relationship that the three had? So it, it was a very unusual relationship. It, it was a, a threesome relationship. Um, Megan considered uh, Christina her girlfriend and William her boyfriend, and the three of them lived together. So when Megan went missing, did they, what were they doing? Like what, they, they were living together in, the, in this, in this, in this uh, apartment, and then at some point Megan had to go missing. Do you have a, a, a good grasp of the timeline here? 
of when so she I, actually did go missing? I, I do have uh, a, a very, um, I, I have a date, but uh, I don't want to give that specific date um, out um, as it's, it's kind of important to the investigation. But um, you don't have to be a homicide detective or be in law enforcement for 23 years to know that when somebody you're living with disappears, and you uh, travel across the country within a very short time after, you don't have to be a homicide detective to know that there's something wrong with that. How about forensics? Is, is this a case, because you recovered the Jeep, right? Was, was, was there anything of value in the Jeep? Well, there, there were some things of value. I don't want to talk about the specifics again, because it is an open investigation. Um, but I, I will say that uh, finding her remains in the water, forensics in that area, was working against us. Um, but there were other things that were found with her that are working for us. You know, as I, I think about this case, the, the identification, uh, Detective, can you describe how difficult that was? Because it seemed like it, it took some time and there and and... There was a thought that it was an Asian victim that was initially found, but what led you to finally being able to match it and put it all together? Certainly. So um, we work uh, very closely and um, really well with our Office of Chief Medical Examiner. Um, and we, more often than not, we do have remains where they can't be readily identified. And um, Maryland's uh, Baltimore's Office of the Chief Medical Examiner will um, take a look at the remains and kind of give us an overview of, of what the person uh, may be. You know, in, in Megan's case, they said that uh, she was an Asian female in her 40s initially in their initial uh, examination, um, leaving space to re-examine and come back to us later saying that maybe she is Asian and Caucasian. Um, and it kind of gave us a, a wider uh, age range. And with that information, um, we opened up more possibilities. When, um, you know, victims or missing people are reported missing, we immediately check, um, you know, all the, the profiles that it might match. We call, you know, local hospitals, uh, other law enforcement jurisdictions. You know, we found her remains uh, in the beginning of October. And, you know, we reached out to Annapolis City and, and other counties around. And unfortunately, when we reached out to the, the counties and, and the other jurisdictions, she wasn't a reported person at that time. So they didn't, you know, when, when we make the calls and we do the research, they don't know yet that she's missing, uh, you know, because she hasn't been reported yet. And uh, eventually, after numerous DNA uh, testing, you know, other family members from other loved ones, um, you know, who they thought that the remains could be, we uh, heard from Annapolis City that they had a missing person uh, that somewhat matched Megan's description. And with permission of uh, retrieving DNA from her daughter and uh, her mother and her father, we were finally able to confirm. And that was about a year, uh, over a year, after we found her remains. So we posted this, as I said, and po folks have posted some comments along there. I want to share a few of them um, with you. Uh, Jennifer writes tonight, she went missing in October, but no one reported it until November. I would look hard at her roommates, and obviously that's a place that's being looked at. Um, but Shannon, who actually reported um, Megan missing? You know, initially we, we thought that Megan was with her boyfriend and Christina. In part of her relationship with William, he had been pulling her away from her family. In fact, at one time I called and he refused to let me talk to her. Um, so we really didn't know that she was really missing. Um, 
But after a couple of weeks, uh, one of her friends posted something on Facebook that said, are you alive, Megan? And my niece and I immediately said, if her friends don't know where she is, then she really is missing. And at that point, my niece who lives closer by actually went in and filed the missing persons report. An adult, she was an adult. I mean, she could leave if she wanted to. So, you know, kind of complicates things. But when you're living with two people and you go missing and they don't report you missing, two plus two sometimes equals four. Detective, I know you don't want to say anything. I, I understand. Um, uh, Rena writes tonight, who would want her dead and whose fingerprints were on the steering wheel of her vehicle? Um, detective, is, is motive a part of this investigation? Motive as in, you know, Motive. I, now, I'm, detective, I'm to, I don't want to put yeah. you. I never want to put you on the spot. On this show, we yeah. don't want to do anything to interfere with the investigation and the prosecution. We just want to shine a light on it. If you can't go into it, just say you can't go into it. I'm a former prosecutor. I understand. Okay. Okay. I, and and I appreciate that. And I, I there, and that's the problem. Is it, it is still an open investigation, and and I don't want to reveal too much that could hurt the investigation later. Absolutely. Uh, this may help, though, what Faye wrote. Um, hello, I am from Arizona, is what Faye writes. So <laughs> folks in Arizona are getting this story. So if there's some information out there, hopefully they share it. Uh, I hope that you uh, can give them closure and find out who did it so everyone else can stay safe around here. And, and that's the important part of this, isn't it, Detective, that uh, you've got some folks that are in Arizona and if people are watching in Arizona, Sometimes people say things, and, and they may say it, and you might not think it's a big deal what they said, but it could be a big deal. And we have been working very closely um, with uh, our law enforcement partners and Pima County Sheriff's Office, Sergeant, I'm sorry, Detective um, Miguel Flores and Sergeant Jill, whose last name escapes me right now. Uh, we're almost on a first name basis that we talk to them so much. I believe that while Christine and William are in Arizona, you know, they are addicted to substances, that during one of their um, conversations, while they may be under the influence, they could say more than they mean to. Absolutely. Um, Shannon, before we go, I wanted to give you uh, an opportunity just to tell us and, and, and make a public play in how important resolving this is for you, the family, the children, uh, to get an answer here? Well, nothing is going to bring Megan back to us. But being able to put this to rest in a way, and it's, it's very important to us to get these people off the street. Because if they did this to Megan, who else is going to cross their path? Um, and the family does, you know, I, I don't really like the word closure, but the family does need to be able to put it to rest. You know, no word I like to use, Shannon? Justice. Yes. Justice. Yes. That's what's needed. Shannon. And Megan deserves justice. Absolutely. Uh, we really appreciate both of you coming on. I, I hope this helps. We will stay on this. We are not, we're not one and done here. Uh, we will stay on this story. Shannon Perry, Megan's aunt, and Detective Kelly Harding, the lead detective in the case, who I know also will stay on this case until the end. Thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, folks, the number's on the screen. Please, if you can, help. Uh, when we come back, uh, we're going to take a look at what's happening in the George Floyd case. 18 days away, and the city of Minneapolis is preparing. What exactly... Are they going to do to prepare? We'll find out when we come back.